The fadeaway jumper can be both captivating to watch and infuriating to defend. From the hands of a lethal scorer, it's more or less unstoppable. From the hands of someone who thinks they're a lethal scorer, it's the kind of thing that can make you want to wander into oncoming traffic. If you've been living on planet Earth in the past 35 years, you are likely aware that Michael Jordan was more of the former than the latter. In the same way that every artist requires a brush and every musician requires an instrument, every hooper must have a go-to method for overcoming the opposition. For Michael Jordan, over the course of his career, that tool became the fadeaway jumper. But where did this move come from? And why was it so effective? Michael Jordan's career has taken on an almost spiritual quality, to the point where it seems like his basketball reference page should be a collection of stone tablets. If there was an adjustment period for Jordan upon entering the league, it was hard to tell. He exploded out of the gate, averaging 28.2 points per game during his rookie season and wowing the league in a way that we really haven't seen since. And even though he wasn't considered a great shooter at the time, he was far from a liability, and stopping his array of leaners, dribble pull-ups, and breathtaking mid-air improvisations made him virtually unstoppable, even for the best defenders in the world. Uh, it's, it's a lot of known concentration playing against Michael Jordan. Uh, like I said, I think he's the best ever that I've ever seen. Still, to hang around in the NBA, reinvention can become critical. Over the course of Jordan's 15 total seasons in the league, 13 with the Bulls and 2 with the Wizards that we try to forget about, the fadeaway became his primary means of staying on top. This shot in and of itself is not a complex idea. It's a jump shot taken while leaning midair and often drifting away from the basket. It's a high degree of difficulty attempt that demands a certain level of skill to justify the way that it flies in the face of basic fundamentals. Simply put, you gotta be good to take it. Otherwise, there might be hell to pay. Step back one-legged, what kind of shot is that? Although it may horrify the Jordan zealots, Michael did not invent the idea of leaning back. And sadly, neither did Fat Joe. Jordan's version of the move absolutely has to be put into a larger context, and we should quickly do that. When we talk about the origin of the fadeaway, what we're really talking about is the evolution of movement and evading the defense while shooting the basketball. In the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, the game underwent a series of transitions from set shooting to jump shooting, from jump shooting to contorting and drifting, and from contorting and drifting to intentionally fading, and so on. Each of these transitions altered the idea of being open, and the fadeaway took that to the extreme. It opened the door for more individualism among the game's best players. For some, this was seen as a major betrayal of the original spirit of the game. Because of the lack of video in those times, it's virtually impossible to know with certainty who actually did the fadeaway first. We do know that it was utilized sporadically in the 60s and the 70s by guys like Oscar Robertson, Jerry West, even Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Wilt Chamberlain. And in the 80s, we continued to see it from skilled scorers like Larry Legend and Bernard King. And by that time, we've reached the man of the hour. Michael Jordan's influences as a shooter are a little tricky to trace. He stated numerous times that the NBA wasn't available for him as a kid growing up in North Carolina in the 70s. College basketball was the show, and two guys get mentioned consistently. Walter Davis might come as a surprise, but he's the first. Another North Carolina guy, Davis was a lanky, sweet shooting wing who played 16 seasons in the NBA. The second influence was the explosive and graceful David Thompson. Thompson was an incredible athlete, a fantastic slasher and finisher, and in a lot of ways, Jordan is a more fully realized version of Thompson. It's plainly visible to see where Jordan might have expanded on what he observed in his game. Other players were supposedly emulated as Jordan's career went along. I know the history, so I know where Michael's moves came from. Mm. You know what I mean? I know they came from David Thompson. I know they came from Dr. J. I know they came from, in particular, Jerry West. So, you know, Michael didn't invent the will. You know right. what I mean? He stole, he stole a, lot of, a lot of moves, too, from a lot of great players who came before him. Versions of the fadeaway showed up in his NBA game as early as 1984, and there are some examples from even earlier. Over time, this move became more and more effective because of the wide variety of its applications. He could do it off one or two feet, 
He could do it off the bounce like he does here against the Bullets in 1997. He could work off the ball and do it off the catch as he does it here over Gary Payton in 1996. But as his game aged like a fine pre-Castro Cuban cigar, his favorite means of tormenting defenses with it was in the post. If Jordan had you posted on the left block, dead man. Dead man. Dead man. Dead man. If Jordan had you posted on the right block, dead man. Dead man. Within the posted version of this move, Jordan had a whole series of options based on how his torso and shoulders felt the defense was playing him. First of all, he would very often skip the trickery entirely if he felt that he could catch the defender off guard and elevate over the top of him, spinning off of his left shoulder, pivoting on his inside foot and jumping backwards, and waiting until his downward momentum has started to shoot the ball. And this was one of his favorite iterations of the move. Second, if he felt the defender selling out to take away his left shoulder, he might throw a head and shoulder fake in that direction and instead spin over his right shoulder kind of knew if he got it on the left block, he's going to come to his left shoulder, or his right block, he's going to come to his left shoulder, which is that same way jump shot. What you try to do is you try to kind of like anticipate it, but say you take away his left shoulder, he'll come left, score with his left hand, or he'll come come to his right shoulder, score it, which is not his strength per se, but he keeps you honest with it. Was the fadeaway jumper practical for Michael Jordan? <laughs> How's this for practicality? Michael Jordan led the NBA in scoring during each of his six championship seasons, and the fadeaway was a key weapon for his offense to some extent for that entire time. Michael Jordan was always an active and capable dribble shooter, but the full development of the fadeaway happened gradually and for a variety of reasons. He was more of a shot creator and a shot maker than a pure shooter, and for the first phase of his career, his jumper was always an option if he was headed downhill, because he was one of the fastest and most fluid athletes ever to play the game. And with age came strength, both because he needed the durability, but also because it would help him better function in a better scheme with better teammates. That better scheme was the triangle offense, and his function within those later and surprisingly modern Bulls lineups allowed him to maintain and in some ways improve his overall economy of movement. But his mastery of the elements surrounding his signature shot was the thing that made defending him one of the most difficult tasks in the history of sports. This move is highly replicable, but it's reserved for the most talented shot creators and shot makers. Look, I did not come here today to whine about the mid-range going away or to be the one billionth person to call it a lost art. But before the pace and space boom started to overhaul popular thinking in basketball, this was a primary weapon for guys like Tracy McGrady, Paul Pierce, Dwayne Wade, Joe Johnson, Kevin Garnett, basically every perimeter star from the 2000s. Kobe Bryant came along on the heels of Jordan's second run in the NBA and obsessively mimicked his idol. To the point where any time a person points to Kobe's example as an inspiration, they're indirectly pointing to MJ. But Kobe's studiousness was a bridge between Jordan and another player who made a living off of the fadeaway, one of the most important players in NBA history, Hakeem Olajuwon. Olajuwon can get overlooked. Aside from Jordan consistently expressing his love for Hakeem, the two players don't have a noticeable connection that would imply influence. Both players showed similar jump shooting habits early in separate environments with very different experiences. Hakeem has said that the move was a carryover from his soccer days growing up in Nigeria. From there, the influences branch in opposite directions and then converge again in the middle. Dirk Nowitzki, another guy with a fadeaway that was nearly impossible to defend, claims that his failure to emulate Hakeem's move gave birth to his own legendary one-legged fade. From there, we see the move in guys like Carl Anthony Towns and Joel Embiid, and then there's Kevin Durant, who claims to have been influenced by both Kobe Bryant and Dirk Nowitzki. So the two timelines are actually intertwined. The temptation is there to say that living off of the mid-range game is no longer a viable way to play. And yet, there's Kawhi Leonard, who seems to be carrying on the legacy of that style in nearly every conceivable way. Impactful seems like an inadequate word to associate with Michael Jordan in pretty much any sense. I guess you could say that he's played a minor role in my life as a Hoops fan, but I would love to see what percentage of people have at least once, at some point, shot the fadeaway and pretended to be this man. Over time, a polished version of the fadeaway has become a reliable tool for the game's most dominant players. It's a beautifully maddening, unblockable shot if done well. 
When the chips are down and the times when legacies are made and destroyed, the shot can go beyond scheme. In hoops, the fadeaway is one of the true manifestations of I'm better than you and you know what's coming. Do something about it. And that's a big reason why we revere Michael Jordan and study that move the way that we do. Lots of people knew that it was coming and during his time at the top, ultimately, nobody ever did anything about it. Let me know if you agree.